Welcome back. The purpose of this short video is to show you how to self-assess yourself. To begin with, in order to self-assess, you must complete the assignments as they are outlined in the components. Let's take a quick look at component four. And this would be the same for all components, two, three, and four. Click on the component, and on the very first page you will see there are five assignments outlined. The assignments vary by component. You see suggested deadlines. Those are just merely suggested. Uh, they're not uh, to put pressure on you at all. If you have missed those deadlines, do not worry about it, but candidates requested deadlines, so I created them. The important thing for you to focus on is what is listed in under each assignment. Everything that is listed is something that you would need to do anyway. It is just chunking the work for you and making it uh, manageable as you process through this uh, program and the journey of certification. So you see assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, assignment four, and assignment five. Very important, you have to complete the work by assignments. Once you've done that, go over to the left side of your screen and click self-assessment. You're going to see a folder that says feedback forms. Click that. Then let's click component four. Then you choose your certificate area. For example, if you are a middle childhood generalist, you would choose that. When you click on this, the feedback forms are going to download. They would download in your download folder, which is located uh, in various places on different computers, but if you cannot find it, just click here. Open it up. Now there are uh, two ways you might want to do this. Uh, again, it's going to show you the assignments as they are listed. Um, and it's, you will see the word mentor will use feedback form. You are your own mentor in this scenario, okay? Unless you provide these forms to appear to read for you, which you can do. But again, you see your assignments. And over here, this, this is a really good screen to look at because you can see assignment one. And then over here, you see there are questions associated with it. These questions are your commentary questions for the first chunk of completing this component. These questions are very significant. Remember, the questions align with the rubric and the rubric aligns with the standard. So you absolutely must answer all of the questions. Um, I have read for various people and I have yet to read for a single candidate that has clearly answered all the statements. I always had to go back and say, did you answer all the questions? So make sure you answer the questions. I always suggest you leave a stem of the question in your commentary just so you will de not delete your answers. And uh, again, it's necessary that you answer all of these questions. So you can download this. It is a Word file. You could actually have your commentary up and reading it as you are answering this, or you can print it out and just use it as a checklist to see did you answer it or not. And you need to answer specifically, all right? Also, very important that you remember, you have to integrate those standards that are identified in the front of each component into your answers in these questions. And we always suggest that you meet a standard five times in five different ways. Make sure you have uh, visited the standards and rubric module. It is absolutely essential to your success that you visit that module and complete the standards notebook and the rubric comparison chart. And again, you're not just answering these questions, you're having to integrate the standards into this. So you have uh, this, that's for assignment one, and you can see you have assignment two, assignment three, and then we see the entire rubric. Each time after you have self-assessed, you should go back and correct your entry, okay? 
Then once it's all done, we want you to take that entire entry and we want you to use your rubric as a checklist, okay? And again, you're your own mentor as you're going through this process. And remember, if it is on the rubric, it, it's not optional unless it says and or. So I would just go through each one and collaborate, uh, I mean, and highlight it or check it off after you check and see that it's there. If it's not obvious to you, it certainly will not be obvious to your assessor. So again, we say to use the rubric as a checklist, okay? And then there are six questions we want you to ask yourself after it's finished, okay? These questions are very significant. I've worked with candidates for over the last 10 years, and um, typically there's always someone that does not certify, and they will say, I answered all the questions, and I integrated my standards. Well, not to the point to where they needed. So these six questions are to prevent you from making that mistake. What happens is when you integrate a standard, you can't just drop the language. You have to show specifically what that looked like in your classroom. So this checklist, this brief checklist here that we give yourself a plus or a minus will allow you to check and see, can the assessor clearly see you doing these things in your classroom? And again, uh, you are welcome to print out these feedback forms and uh, give them to a, a colleague of yours. If you have a colleague that's an NBCT, that is fabulous. If not, uh, just choose a high-performing colleague that can read for you as well. Okay, that's it. That's how you self-assess.